we just kind of started our own thing. We didn't know anybody else or whatever, so we just started putting on gigs ourselves and started eventually meeting more people. Because um, sound cover was like one of the first improv things I did really. So the first thing I did was a band called Masira, which turned into Iceman, which is me and Ant's first band. It was named after Tio Masira, who was a producer of like Miles Davis albums. And, and then that was like just free form stuff. But we were just starting trying to improv. So it was very raw, like really rough around the edges. Um, but yeah, Masira is like definitely got. If I ever got a tattoo, I would, I would have Masira somewhere, because that's kind of where it all started from. Also, a large part of that was um, Dave, the sax player that we met at the Cube as well. So he was a larger than life character, and like his playing was like real fiery and like proper avant-garde sax. So he was like a big part of that spirit of that band. So it was part of it. We really want to carry on with that. And then um, that, and then I kind of thought I just wanted to do my own thing, and then I started Iceman, Iceman Furnace. The name came about from I think just my housemates at the time. That started off as a, a solo thing originally, so that was just pure improv. I was I was just going to say with us with Iceman, I think we're, we've been lucky because we're a mishmash of sounds. So we've got a punk element to us, but we've got a jazz element and stuff. So we've always been able to play with different bands. So one of the people that I met at the same time as the, all the Cube stuff was 
uh, Matthew Cheney. Um, he was a ba- in a band called Arctic Circle, along with um, Rosie Plain, who's, who's done really well since, um, and um, a guy called uh, George McKenzie, who works now at Friendly Records. He also runs Friendly Records and also um, Radio One Records in Park Street. Um, but he's they're both just brilliant musicians and been in loads of different bands and over time in Bristol and, and beyond and stuff. But anyway, so so my very first proper actually band gig was with Arctic Circle and that was at Cafe Kino. And then um, that kind of made me realise there was this whole scene, what they call DIY scene, which I, and I kind of learned about that, but in fact you could put on your own gigs, you could create your own kind of thing. So that was kind of eye-opening. Into a tango where Wait for hours, hold your breath Down every mile we pass Make a glass through the grass Take your vessel, hold your bus There's a dismal time Hold on, hold on for a good time Like this surgence of like jazz music or turns to jazz music, but also Im- improvised music, which could be anything like electronic or noise or, or jazz or or but kind of from all these kind of new people that, that have come up and uh, doing their own thing in more of a DIY kind of way away from the established jazz scene, which I find like really in- inspirational and. Uh, I just wanted to do something to, I guess, amalgamate everything and champion that. So um, even though there's a lot going on, there's there's still different scenes kind of here and there, and not people don't necessarily know each other. So it was it's a way of um, putting scenes together so as a whole everything can perhaps progress. My eventual thing for it would be to turn it into a label, so have um, a compilation of all the different things that are going on, and yeah, I just like, I w- want things really to come out of the underground. Like it's great, like really nice being in the scene and playing with similar people and great stuff going on, but there's a real like strong thing in me that I want it to more people to know about it and get out of Bristol and have some legacy about it. Um, John Coltrane mm-hmm. uh, he had this famous thing where he had so many ideas in his head because partly his style evolved from that he had so many ideas that he wanted to play all the ideas at the same time so that's partly where the wall of sound thing that he created in his playing came from so the wall of sound is it can be referred to different things but in his case because he was playing a lot of notes at the same time um, he kind of created an illusion of the, the texture. For me, it's like one of the most authentic 
voices, just something in his in his tone or his delivery, or and that's what I really took from mm. from because that's what I really love. That's why it's important for me in music to have like a deep, really deep feeling. Like Miles Davis, he's my god. Like it's weird because when I stop when I was playing over like Louis Armstrong records, like Miles Davis. I thought, because everyone just went on on about him all the time and stuff, I thought he was overrated. And because I had come up with, through the brass band tradition of like playing a certain way, and then hear, suddenly hearing him play, I thought he couldn't play the trumpet properly, because he would like split certain notes or like... But then the more I got into finding my own voice and playing, and I realised that he was he was a genius, because he made the, made the trumpet sound like a partly like a voice but just the feeling he had just that no it's just not really something you can maybe maybe it's just not something you can practice the one thing that I've always had is just that willpower I don't feel other like people think I'm good enough or like I don't fit in or so I'm, it's all like when I first began it was almost like a kind of fuck you I was like I don't care I'll just do my own thing and I'm gonna make it prove everybody wrong and like so it come so it, there's a lot of like a lot of the drive comes from a bit of anger so I think that drive is useful like anger is a useful driving force Definitely, that's why I kind of identified with um, when I started getting more into the. Well, I'm not going to say I'm really into the part, <laughs> part of the punk scene, but um, associated with more punk bands and, and that kind of thing, or even with um, with the more intense sides of jazz, like free jazz and avant um, garde jazz and stuff. In it. I'm not like a cornet player in, a, in his natural environment, particularly. Like I'm a, a, essentially I'm an avant-garde cornet player. The, how, what it feels like when like people aren't listening or, or not giving you gigs or looking down at the music you're playing because it's in brackets jazz or things of that nature so I know that that feeling pretty well so I never I always try and give anybody like or like new bands or whatever and always try and help people in that way to let them do what they want basically I think the Liquid Library are great because they just they just keep on going and just like keep doing gigs and like that, that's an example if you just you just keep at it but you just got to keep on yeah just have willpower like I think I've got pretty iron willpower really um, it's kind of fake but I remember seeing like a march and bound on TV um, I think I don't know I must have been pretty young like six seven or something I don't know it's weird because I'm not really like that much into marching bands but anyway <laughs> for some reason I liked it and I think I mentioned to my mum that I'd be great because I was lucky to go to school and they would give lessons and stuff and then I started actually on the piano like I came from a pretty musical family anyway so my brother played cello guitar and my sister played violin and all the rest of it so and my mum could play and my dad could like mess around on the piano or whatever so and we always listened to have different music so my um sister would be into like nina cherry and um red hot chili peppers when when they were good and then um brother would be like massive into heavy metal like iron maiden and van halen and which I was like, that was the first music I was really into. Me and my best friend used to sneak into his room because his whole room was just plastered with posters of Metallica and when you, yeah, just like loads and loads of stuff. So when you would walk through the house, 
um, it'd be like a collage of sounds, like, and sometimes they would meet and make like for a brief moment and kind of make make quite a cool um, collage of the texture of different genres or whatever. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I was playing piano before and then I started cornet after. And after a while, I decided to pursue cornet. I joined a band called Filt and Brass, who are like a little band and um, yeah, there was kind of, I had like I meant two mentors at the time. So my first teacher was Keith Williams, who he's a Salvation Armist and he's a conductor there, like a really great cornet player. And, um, and then uh, my other mentor at the same time was from the brass band, brass band World Two. He was called Jim Scott. He's like, passed away now. Um, so he used to be the conductor of built-in brass. But both of their experience in the brass band world, they, they taught me a lot how to make a good sound and like how to like phrase and all these different things and I would so I would practice these big like grand cornet solos and stuff so that I like, looking back that was a really good grounding um, and but at the same time all this was happening um, I was getting into jazz stuff so I would I don't know what gave me the idea I don't know like I wasn't particularly trying to be a jazz musician or something but anyway I just start playing my, my own stuff over records, like either copying records or like Louis Armstrong. He was like my first hero, and I would like copy his solos, and then I would eventually like play my own stuff over the records, and then that's how my style of playing. That's how I learned how to play basically. Because I, I don't, I never, I tried to get into theory, and I, I still would like to incorporated more but it literally kind of came from playing over records and, and copying records and then eventually you kind of get into more of a muscle memory thing and then I kind of developed a thing where I would see the notes before I play them I think I noticed I think I was aware of, like I still am aware at the moment, but different approaches to playing. So uh, in that moment, like there was a big like debate in my head about how to approach soloing or improvising. So one method I had was more of an internal using my ear. So I would play something and then I would really, really concentrate and like hear in, in my head what to play next. So that was another, that was a, still like a technique I'd kind of use and stuff. But then the other technique was, it felt a bit more robotic at the time, but a weirdly more natural, is where um, you kind of, I knew what notes I wanted to play, play, like a phrase. And f I don't know, it's like something I can explain just kind of, kind of naturally, like I could see the, the phrase I wanted to play next. A weird debate at the time between playing what it, it was in my ear in my head or what I was seeing and I think it kind of came to a point where I decided to play what I was seeing so the the rest of the music is like the background or the background to the painting and then the way I see improvising is you've got your own paintbrush and you you go around and kind of just fill in the bits that need filling in or you think it's actually like basically it's like painting to me or drawing to me that's the way I see music as well as that I really love when players play something and you're thinking how the, how do they do that it's like a illusion it kind of throws your mind in a different place uh, and that's what I want to develop more is to um, create kind of sonic illusions really Miles Davis had this thing about um, what, what what the note you play after makes it the wrong note or not so you can always like if you're improvising if you're playing something that perceivably is out of tune or whatever 
you can you've always got the home to go back to me playing over records it kind of came to the point where I thought I, I just need to go out and actually like play properly um, and that was quite a big step just because I was just so nervous actually actually play but um, I was kind of surprised because I could play with some proficiency and do all right like play by ear doing okay but it was a few moments where I actually felt like just giving up just purely just because I hadn't found my my way of doing things I guess I didn't know what was around the corner that's what I'm proud of we kind of created our own scene basically Weird though, how can somebody invent something like this? <laughs> 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 <laughs>